We're working on problem 4.1 from the Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 practice final exam. So problem 4.1 gives us a particular instance of this, uh, this problem of finding a target value in an array of points where we can probe the points to find out their values. We don't, we don't have access to the values beforehand. But we do have access to the cost, and the cost of probing one point, say, uh, here's the most expensive point to probe here, uh, might be higher than the cost of probing another point. Here's the least expensive point to probe. Um, as I look at this, I notice one interesting thing. Uh, these indexes start at zero, and if we look up, uh, you will see that the problem is actually specified with the indexes starting at one. Um, so uh, that was an error. And you'll see these kinds of errors in specifications of problems, ideally not in uh, exams, but they do happen. In this particular case, I don't know that it's going to make a lot of difference to us that these indexes start at zero rather than at one, uh, so I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Uh, we're not concerned with the details of the algorithm down to the level of, like, should we uh, take the floor of n divided by two or the ceiling of n divided by two or something like that when we're looking for a point to probe. Um, that would be affected by where the indexes start, but that's that's not it's just not a huge concern for us. So we'll let the indexes start at zero. So there's seven points here. They've each got values. We can see the values, of course, but you have to imagine your algorithm as it runs on this problem won't necessarily see well. It won't see the values. To see a particular value, it has to pay the probe cost associated with that. But it does see the probe costs right away. Now, what it wants for this is something about the minimal worst case cost. So it says the minimal worst case cost of 60 is achievable using standard binary search. Briefly explain what target generates the worst case cost and why. This idea of minimal worst case cost here, there's a whole lot packed into that. Um, so let's, let's try and unravel that a bit. Uh, one way that you would compare algorithms on problems like these would be to ask what's the worst case cost uh, that the algorithm will pay. Um, so for example, let's say um, that the target will, let's see, 60 for binary search. So let's, let's find the target that would do that. Uh, we'd pay 10 to probe the middle. Uh, let's assume it's not what we're looking for because if we're looking for a worst case cost, we're certainly not going to let binary search get lucky and find what it's looking for early. It's either going to go left or right. If it goes left, it's going to pay 20 over here. If it goes right, it's going to pay 40 over here. 40 seems likely to be better. Uh, so if we go right, it'll probe uh, for the value 25 at index 5. And then if we force it to go right again, it'll probe for the value 90 at index 6, and it'll pay a total of 60. And we can let 90 be the target, or anything uh, larger than 25 could actually be the target. Any value larger than 25 would force the same pattern of probes. But let's just say 90. So that, that actually tells us the answer to this. The target is 90. And why does it generate the worst case cost? Um, because binary search is forced to uh, spend 60 at most on any target sought in the array. Let's double check for a second that that's actually the worst. I mean, it said it's 60 and we found 60, so that probably is the worst. But let's just double check. You can see how binary search would operate on this instance as a tree. So we would root our tree here and say binary search is first going to check on this index uh, because that happens to be the middle index. And then next, depending on the target that binary search is looking for, if that target is 13, it's done. 
If that target is larger than 13, it's going to look to the right. If that target is smaller than 13, it's going to look to the left. In fact, any algorithm that you're using that's a good algorithm, regardless of whether you use binary search specifically, is going to have the property that it, it will, after looking at one value in the array, throw away either everything to the left of that or everything to the right of that. Uh, because we can prove, given the constraint that the values are in sorted order, that the target that we're looking for uh, can't be in both halves that are created. Now, if it's not binary search, they're not necessarily actually halves, uh, but in both parts on the left and the right. Back to binary search, though. We start by looking at this middle index, and then there are three possibilities. One is that we stop right there. That's, that's probably, of course, that's the best possibility from the algorithm's perspective. But from our perspective as an analysts of algorithms, that's the least interesting perspective. That's just when it gets lucky. So assuming it doesn't get lucky, it's either going to have to search to the left or to the right. And that creates a choice in this tree here. If we go to the left, the next thing we're going to try probing is this index right here. If we go to the right, because this is binary search, the next thing we're going to try probing is this index right here. And then similarly, if we don't get lucky on those, we'll either go to the left or to the right, and you can see this tree forming. And the tree just represents all the possible ways that the algorithm might run on this array. So the question is, does this node down here that we associated with this value of 60, does it really represent the worst case for binary search as an algorithm? Uh, and the answer is yes. We can look at all of these, and we can see that it really represents the worst. Let me just put costs in red here. We accumulate a cost of 10 at this node. Uh, when we go down to the left, this node costs 20, so we accumulate a cost of 30 here. If we go to the right, on the other hand, um, this node costs 40, so we accumulate a total of 50. So we've already got 10 from the root, and we're building up cost as we go. So we've got 10 plus 40 on the right, and we've got 10 plus 20 on the left. Now, again, on the left, if we're not lucky at this point on the left, we're going to have to go either left or right from there. So let's say that we go left. We've paid 30 so far, we're going to pay an additional 20 for a cost of 50. So that's not the worst case there. It's not as bad as the 60 we already calculated way off on the right. Uh, what if we went to the right from our cost of 30 right here? Well, if we go to the right, we're going to accumulate a cost, uh, an additional cost of 24, and that'll give us a total of 54, which is expensive, but still not as bad as 60. And then we've got one more thing to explore other than the 60 that we already worked through, and that's if we go to the left from 50, we accumulate a total cost of 59 with the 9 down here. If we go to the right, as we said before, we accumulate a total cost of 60 with the 10 down here. So indeed, that particular node in this tree we've used to describe how our algorithm runs really is the worst case for our algorithm. So what does it mean by the minimal worst case cost? How can this be the minimal worst case cost? What is it minimal over? And the answer is that it's minimal over all algorithms that are going to run on these nodes. And I've actually made an implicit assumption here, which is that you don't know anything about the distribution of values. For instance, all these values were positive integers, but we don't know that they're positive integers. They are, for example, real numbers, and we don't know anything about their distribution. So it's just as likely that the next real number after 1 will be 1.000001 as that the next one will be 2. Um, we, we just don't know. We have no a priori information about the distribution. If we did, you can do all sorts of clever things. I know this is an analogy that doesn't really catch on anymore, but if you imagine a phone book picture in your mind a day once upon a time where people had big books with names in order with phone numbers associated with the names, and you're looking for a particular name, and the name is Wolfman, like my name, well, you're not going to open the phone book in the middle to try and find Wolfman, because you know that W's are towards the end of the alphabet. So your first probe is actually going to be 
towards the end. I'm going to assume that we don't have information like that in this particular problem. And at that case, this worst case cost is minimal in the sense that there's effectively no other tree that we can draw besides this one that has a better worst case cost than this. There's no other tree whose worst case cost is smaller than 60. At least that's what this is claiming. So let's try one other tree so we can see if that's actually true. I'm going to erase the binary tree that I've drawn up here and put another tree in place. So take a moment. Commune with that tree that we had, and here it goes. OK, so let's try some other tree. Uh, I don't know. Let's say that we um, maybe we're going to start with the cheapest thing first. That that's something that's sort of a greedy algorithm that sounds good. So here's the cheapest cost. We could start by looking at that one, and then recursively we'll try the cheapest cost on each half. Right. So the cheapest cost over here is going to be this, and then the next cheapest is going to be this. Over here, let's say with ties, we go as close to the middle as we can. So this is the cheapest cost on, oh, I'm sorry, that is not the cheapest cost on the left. I missed that 10 there. So we'll deal with ties later. We'd actually go to this next, and then we'll go as close to the middle as we can. And so we'll have a tree like that. Uh, so we accumulate at the start a cost of 9, right at the top. If we go right, we accumulate an additional cost of 10 for 19 here. And then if we're forced to go left, we accumulate an additional cost of 40 for 59. And that sounds like a good start, because now on the right-hand side, the worst case cost is only 59, which is less than the 60 we saw before. But if we go to the left, well, we accumulate 19 up to this point. We accumulate another 20 here to get to 39. If we go left again, we only accumulate another 20, so we get to 59. But if our target is 8, or anything between 7 and 13, in fact, then we're going to have to explore this last one here. And when we do that probe, what's 39 plus 24? 59 plus 4, 3. Uh, sorry, 63. 63. Uh, so that'll be a cost of 63. That is the worst case cost for this algorithm on this instance. And, and it is actually a really easy to describe algorithm, right? So my algorithm is uh, if the number of points, if there's only one point, then probe that point and you know something interesting uh, about the answer. Either you've found what you're looking for or you know, you know whether it's to the left or to the right of that. If there's more than one point, then we are going to find the point with the cheapest cost, breaking ties for the one closest to the middle. And if they're tied for how close, we'll just break arbitrarily. We'll take the left one. Okay. Um, so that made us choose this index first. And then it gave us choices all down the line. So that's another algorithm. And we can see how that algorithm produces its own tree, given this particular input. But that algorithm's worst case cost on this particular input is worse than binary searches. So in a sense, we've proven if, if this is what we care about, if minimal worst case cost in general is what we care about, then that algorithm that I just described, find the cheapest cost and probe there first, that is not an optimal algorithm. We know it's not an optimal algorithm because this example right here proves it's not as good as binary search. Maybe there is no algorithm that is always optimal. Okay. We don't know that for sure, but we do know that the algorithm I just described is not always optimal. Okay, so just to recap, this was a small problem here. It only really asked you to find the target that would give you a cost of 60 for binary search. But hidden inside of it was this idea of minimal worst case cost, which really there should have been a separate question about on this problem because it's a big idea. It's a way of analyzing this problem that gets at the kind of things that we like in algorithm analysis. It gives us a way of saying, no matter how bad a problem is for a particular algorithm that we're using to address it, our algorithm still does at least as well in the worst case as everything else. That's kind of what we're looking for when we say minimal worst case cost. In this particular case, in this particular instance, Binary search achieves that minimal worst case cost. We haven't proven that. All I've done is try two different algorithms. 
but I'm going to claim to you that binary search does the best you could possibly do. It's worth trying yourself to prove that. This isn't that large an instance. See if you can prove that there's no other algorithm that does better than binary search on this particular instance. But we'll move on to the next problem next.